This is Mr. Catcher Side with RNSG1341, Common Concepts of Adult Health for College of the Mainland. We're still in Unit 1. <clears throat> this is Lecture 3, Fluid and Electrolytes 2. And today we're going to be talking about acid base and fluid replacement. This lecture was previously recorded on September the 1st, um, 2020. Um, but before we get on with the video, I want to go over the test review items first. These are the things that you need to understand to be successful on your test. And so while we're going through these, while you're listening um, to the, um, the videos, make sure you're completing out concept maps on the disruptions below and on the pharmacology. Now, you don't have to do it on the first item here, normal arterial blood gas values but you do need to memorize the normal arterial blood gas values. And to do that, you're going to have to go to page 288 in your main textbook and look for table 1614. Page 288, table 1614. And it shows you your normal um, blood gas ranges there. So anything below those or anything above those are going to be abnormal. And so you're going to have to be able to determine um, which disruption your patient is in based on those blood gas values. And those disruptions are respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So again, test questions will give you the blood va gas values or the symptoms, and you're going to have to determine um, what your actions are based on the knowledge of those disruptions. Then we're going to talk about fluid replacements. And if you go to page 290, 291, uh, really focus on table 1618 that talks about your common crystalloid solutions. Um, all your fluid replacements are going to be either hypotonic, isotonic, hypertonic. There may or may not be IV additives, or you may have a colloid. Um, solution as well and you'll need to know how to treat those those imbalances that we talked about in the last lecture um, with the knowledge that you learn there so, so um, consider those those types there as the the ones that you need to memorize and learn um, how they function what they're good for I've also um, going to give you two additional review videos um, they're not going to be on this video per se but I'll attach them in the uh, in Blackboard, it's more of a review of your um, fluid and electrolytes uh, to kind of summarize all of the things that we've learned the last two lectures. And mostly, I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. Number one, this lecture is kind of short, um, but it doesn't mean that the information is not very important. Um, fluid and electrolytes is going to be a very important part of your. Um, exam and it's important that you understand how to determine uh, whether you're in any kind of hyper or hypo electro, um, electrolyte state or if your blood gases are off and how you treat those. Um, so please review those review videos as well. Okay, on to our um, lecture. We're going to talk a little bit about acid base balance and arterial blood gases. So homeostasis also requires that there be a balance between the acids and your bases or your salts in your blood. When we are not achieving this, um, it can lead to health problems such as diabetes. Well, actually the health problems cause this, such as diabetes, COPD, and kidney disease. This is another thing you need to memorize. You need to memorize your normal pH, which is 7.35 to 7.45. Less than 7.35 is acidosis. Greater is alkalosis. Just make sure we're recording. Sorry. Yes. Uh, 
Um, and when there's an the increase in um, hydrogen concentration, um, this is, creates acidity. If there's a decrease, it's alkalinity. Now this shows you the different ranges of pH. And we talked about greater than, less than being acidotic or alkalosis. If it gets extreme and you go to 6.8 on the as acidotic end and above 7.8 on the alkalinic end, this patient could die. So you can tell that we have a very small range of a variety that we can handle um, in a patient's serum um, before this becomes a fatal situation. Three mechanisms to regulate acid-base balance to keep pH between 7.35 and 7.45 is, is the buffer system. And let's see. We're still in chapter 16, <clears throat> but let me tell you where that buffer system starts. Page 285, buffers act to chemically change strong acids into weaker ones or to bind acids and neutralize them. This minimizes the effect of acids on blood pH until they can be excreted from the body. Buffers only or buffers can maintain pH only if the respiratory and renal systems are functioning adequately. Also the respiratory system and the renal system help to maintain alterations in acid-base balance. Other buffers can include phosphates, protein, hemoglobin, or cellular shifts of hydrogen um, out of the cell, in and out of the cell in exchange for potassium. Respiratory uh, regulation shows how this works. Respiratory center in the medulla controls breathing, so there's increased respirations, which would increase the CO2 elimination and decrease CO2 in the blood. Decreased respirations lead to CO2 retention, which can cause an acidotic situation. This occurs mostly in your COPD patients. Renal system regulation. This conserves bicarb and excretes some acid. Three mechanisms for acid excretion would be secreting free hydrogen, or combining hydrogen with an ammonia or excreting weak acids themselves. Now we're going to have a question here, so we're gonna pause. I want you to click your pause button and read this question. Now that you're finished reading the question, what is the answer? D, acidos acidosis causes hydrogen ions in the blood to be exchanged for potassium from the blood or from the cells. Alterations in acid balance, and this occurs when the comp compensatory mechanisms fail. So when the buffers aren't working or you're in renal failure or you have significant damage to your lungs, um, we're gonna have um, imbalances that are gonna be called respiratory or metabolic. And they're going to be called acidosis or alkalosis. So, meaning, is it caused in the respiratory or is it caused in metabolic? Is it creating an acidotic situation or an alkalosis situation? And is this acute or chronic? Is it something brand new or is it something the patient's been managing over time? Arterial blood gases, which is blood from the arteries, give objective information about the acid-base status. This is how we check for acid-base imbalances. The underlying cause, the body's ability to regulate pH, and the overall oxygenation status. 
so 1613 on page 288 um, will show, actually it's, um, the slide has changed, Six, 1614 on page 288 is the table that you need to use to memorize your pH, your PaCO2, which is your, your um, the, the acid part and the bicarb. This is what you need to memorize for all those. Interpretation of ABGs, look at the values, look at the pH first, and then use Rome to determine respiratory or metabolic. Determine if the patient is compensating, assess PaO2 and O2 saturation. So the acid-based mnemonic or Rome, if it's respiratory, you're going to see an increase. If it's respiratory alkalosis, you're going to see an increase in pH with a decrease in PaCO2. If it's respiratory acidosis, you're going to see a low pH with an increase of PaCO2. Metabolic, the things are equal instead of opposite. Metabolic acidosis, you have a corresponding um, low pH with a low bicarb and it will alkalosis an increase in pH with an increase in bicarb. And that's Rome, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So here's a case study. Put pause, click, uh, click pause so that you can read this. Now that we've finished pause, what type of acid-base imbalance would you expect Jerry to have? Two, what's causing it? Three, what type of compensation would you expect or not expect? Explain. So please pause and, and respond to those. Now that we're back from pause, here are your answers. Click pause while you read them. What would Jerry's ABG look like and what is the treatment? Click pause to answer both of these. Here's the answers. Click pause to read both of these. Respiratory acidosis is carbonic acid excess caused by hypoventilation or respiratory failure. It compensates with the kidneys trying to conserve bicarbonate and secreting hydrogen into the urine. Case study, mania, click pause while you read this. So now we have some questions. What type of acid-base imbalance would you expect mania to have? And then what's causing it? And then what type of compensation would you expect or not expect? Click pause while you answer these questions. Here are your answers. Click pause while you go through each of the answers. What would mania's ABG look like? And then what is the treatment? Click pause while you write these answers out. Here are your answers. Click pause while you read through each of the answers. Respiratory alkalosis is carbonic acid deficit caused by hypoexemia from acute pulmonary disorders and hyperventilation. Compensation rarely occurs when acute, but it can buffer with bicarb shift. 
renal compensation will be what works if the patient is in chronic respiratory alkalosis. Here's a case study about Adam Allen. Click pause while you um, read this situation here. Now, what type of acid base imbalance would you expect Allen to have? What is causing it? And what type of compensation would you expect or not expect? Click pause while you answer these questions. Here are the answers to your questions. Click pause while you read the answers. What will Allen's ABG look like? And what is the treatment? Click pause while you go through this. Case study. Answers. Metabolic acidosis, this is excess carbonic acid or base bicarbonate deficit caused by ketoacidosis, lactic acid accumulation, severe diarrhea, or kidney disease. Compensatory mechanisms, increased CO2 excretion by the lungs. These, this will result in Kuzmal respirations, deep and rapid and the kidneys will excrete acid. Case study, Anthony, put it pause while you're reading through this case study. Here's your questions. What type of acid base imbalance would you expect Anthony to have? What's causing it? What type of compensation would you expect or not expect? And then explain that. Click pause while you answer these questions. Here are your answers. Click pause while you read through the answers. What will Anthony's ABGs look like? And what is the treatment? Click pause while you work through this. Here are the answers for that work through on Anthony. Click pause while you read through these uh, definite or these answers. Metabolic alkalosis based by carb excess caused by prolonged vomiting or gastric suction, gain of HCO, HCO3. Compensatory mechanisms, renal excretion of bicarb, decreased respiration rate to increase the plasma. Practice ABG interpretation, case one. What imbalance is this? Click pause while you work through this. Case study two, what imbalance is this? Click pause while you work through the problem. Case three, what imbalance is this? Click pause while you work through this problem. Case four, what imbalance is this? Click pause while you work through this problem. Case five, what imbalance is this? Click pause while you work through this problem. Case six, ABGs are as follows and it describes those. Describe a patient who would have these ABGs including history assessment and treatment. Click pause while you work through this problem. Case seven, very similarly worked out. Click pause while you work through this problem. Case eight, here are the ABGs. Describe the patient history assessment. Click pause while you work through this problem. Case nine, ABGs are results of, as follows. 
and then describe the patient that would have these APGs, including history assessment and treatment. Click pause while you work through this problem. Case study 10. Click pause while you work through this problem. Case study 11. Click pause while you work through this problem. Audience response question here is a prototypical type of question we'll use when we're um, having these kinds of tests on acid base. So click pause while you work through this problem. Here's the answer for that question. Oral fluid and electrolyte replacement. This is the kind of fluids we use. Usually it's water and glucose or water and sodium, sometimes with added glucose and potassium. Purposes to maintain when oral intake is not adequate and when losses have occurred. Types of fluid are categorized by tonicity. And you will see on page 291, table 1618, it shows the different types of IV fluids, whether they're isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic. And we'll show you the indications and considerations. D5W is typically isotonic helps replace water losses, helps prevent ketosis. Isotonic fluids, normal saline, this is an isotonic, also lactated ringers. Hypertonic solutions, D5 and a half, D5W, also D5 and a quarter. Colloids, and that's it on that. Um, what I will tell you on acid base, you will need to be able to determine by the values whether your patient is acidotic or alkalotic, whether it's respiratory or um, metabolic. You will not have to answer any compensation questions. Compensation will be um, next semester. Um, but you do need to know your IVs as well. Um, this is going to be the end of this lecture. Please make sure this is a very important chapter to read and to answer any questions you have. Please make sure you've worked through your concept maps so that you can highlight the uh, most important aspects of each one of these different kinds of problems. You will need for, for respiratory alkalosis, acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, acidosis, you're going to need to know um, the different um, signs and symptoms of each.